It feels a lot nicer to drive though. Oh, okay. Let's not tell anybody about that one. What is up guys? Welcome back to another daily build video. This time the Pagani Utopia. This is a brand new car for Motorfest. And man, what a beautiful car. It's definitely one that I really like and it is actually really good. I said that about the Zenvo as well. I think both cars are sort of equal a little bit. I think the Pagani is just a little bit better. Maybe just uh, has a little bit more speed than the Zenvo. Anyways, it feels a lot nicer to drive than the Zenvo, and I was actually impressed with the way the Zenvo handled. The difference to me is the rear end grip in low speed corners and the acceleration in the middle of the gearbox. So you're talking uh, two, three, four, those gears, five a little bit, but it accelerates really, really well, and, and it accepts NOS extremely well. It does very, very well with NOS. Now, because of that, it runs very good times on my test courses. I tested it on achieving immortality, which is good for high speed turns. And then I tested on legendary versus rivalry, and that's gonna give you the test for gutters and acceleration. Now, we need to take a look. <laughs> I love the, the gold flake tire smoke. We need to take a look at the test times that I got because they're actually very surprising. So, on Achieving Immortality, it got a 119 417. It's the fastest 119 that I've run. Now, I do have an 18 on both the T50 and the Agar R, but this is the fastest 19 that I've been able to run, and it did it effortlessly. I mean, without a tune, without a wide body, just a bone stock Utopia, I ran a 19.7. And then, with all of the customizations, the tires, the wide body, all of that, and the tune, I was able to drop that down just a little bit to a 19.4. It's pretty impressive. The car is very nice to drive. It is very user friendly. This is one I would highly recommend for the Grand Races if you're having trouble. The only thing is it does struggle just a little bit with top speed, but it handles so nice that it might actually be faster for a lot of you. If you get into a situation where you got T50 just kind of pulling away from you on the highway, there's not much you're gonna be able to do about it because the top speed is a little higher. So that's a problem, but in the right circumstances, this is actually a very good car. I do not consider this a meta car. It might make the list as a contender or possibly a viable option. I haven't driven it in a grand race yet, but I think it's definitely in the viable category. So we'll see, we will see. I wanna see how it feels in the grand races, but here is the really interesting fact. I ran a 223-215 on Legendary versus Rivalry, and keep in mind that's all about gutters it's all about acceleration. That's my fastest time ever on that course with a hypercar. My previous best was with the T50, a 223.889. So it beat it by six tenths of a second, which I guess, you know, that could be explained by driver error with the T50, I don't know. The point is, it's extremely fast. So whether you wanna rank it above it or not, that's, you know, up to you. But for now, you can just say that they're in the same company when it comes to guttering. The Utopia actually feels a little bit more stable than the T50. So. Anyways, that being said, let me show you the tune and we'll go out for a grand race. All right, starting with the brake balance, we're at 40%. Then if we move to the load rear, minus three. For the suspension, I'm at plus seven on both front and rear. For the compression, I'm at plus nine, both front and rear. And for the rebound, I'm at plus four, front and rear. Now for the ARBs, we're at plus 10, both front and rear. And the camber, we're at minus 0.25, front and rear. Notice, didn't really switch anything in terms of offsetting front and rear. Everything is even when it comes to the front and the rear. The car feels extremely balanced. So it's just something that I really didn't want to mess with it too much. The only thing I did was the aero load rear gives it a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of lift in the back end so that you can get a little more oversteer in those corners. So anyways, with a 148 lateral G and a braking distance of 14.0, that's a crazy good braking distance. And the acceleration of 2.6, this car is actually competitive. Let's see how it does in the grand races. All right, here we go. We got the Yamaha first, the RB14 Disruption Edition, and then finally the Utopia. This could be disastrous. These motocross starts are always just a coin toss as to whether I'm gonna die on this first corner or not. Actually, the first corner is not the problem. It's the 
hidden rocks inside the bushes. The uh, people not paying attention to where they're going and, uh, you know, blocking the, the path. Let's see what we can do here as far as not getting crashed. All right, not too bad. Not too bad. Let off a little bit here so we can get out of this. All right. We got a nice we got a nice start so far. Let's just hope we don't crash on this part. Oh. <laughs> we almost hit that that truck. That was really really close to hitting that SUV. Is very close. We got Dimebag 57 here in the front with us. Let's get it, dude. All right, go ahead, go ahead. We'll let you go. I don't want to mess you up. We want to keep going fast, bro. There we go. Keep the speed up. Go left or left or left or. You're gonna hit the sticks. All right, you're good. You're good. Maybe a little bit of desync. I'm not sure where he's at. Uh-oh. You got a little wobbly. It's all right. We're good. We're still together. You can do some slipstream. Let's go. AGP. We didn't die in motocross. Uh, I think he got a bad spawn on his car. We should be good to go now. Oh, a little bit of wall. We'll NOS to get rid of that. All good, all good. Now, I do have to warn you guys, Hyper is my worst class. It's the... It's the class that I suffer the most. So we'll see if we can uh, actually finish this off. All right, let's get the slip back. Thank you, thank you. Oh no, we lost Dimebag a little bit. Alright, let's let our NOS recover a little bit here. We're going to need it coming up. That was actually a nice turn by him. And then, sort of a terrible turn by both of us. <laughs> Alright, we're good. Please just don't rear-end me here. Oh, he ended up on top. All right, he's still good? Oh, yeah, we're good. Oh, rocks! I looked back for one second and I hit rocks. Oh, that was annoying. <laughs> Damn it, dude. Oh, I just wanted to see where he was at. That was... Man, what a rookie move, dude. What a rookie move. And then I compounded the mistake by... Uh, using all of my NOS. It's all right. We're in the Utopia. We're just gonna... <laughs> it looks like he's having a little bit of an issue here. All right, we're back. I don't know what happened. He lost control. Maybe ended up in the... Oh, I knew that was going to happen. I was taking it kind of slow. I was being cautious. I was like, is this going to be a problem? 
All right, Utopia. Let's do your thing, dude. I'm, I was being very cautious through that section because I'm not the best at it. All right, had to, had to lift on that corner. Usually I don't with other cars. So that shows you that the lateral Gs can be a problem. Let's get back up to speed here. We blasted the NOS. I wanted to get closer to top speed, even though I'm not there yet. And give us some time to recover here. All right, let's be patient with our NOS here. So we get to seventh. There we go. Now we can get it close to 280. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Let's go. Utopia. FTW. Oh, lifted a little on the corner there. Caused me to slow down. If I could have missed that corner, we'd have been better. And we are going to bring it home with the Utopia, even though I messed up a lot. God, what a beautiful looking car, though. Oh, man, I scratched it up a little bit, didn't I? Anyways, the Utopia, dude, it feels very good. However, like I said, it doesn't have the lateral G stat of the top cars in the class. So while it does good on a lot of my test courses, I feel like it just doesn't. It's just not. It's just not meta. The T50 is going to kick its butt. The Agera R is going to kick its butt. Probably the Zonda F primary edition could probably do better than it in the grand races simply because of its lateral G stat. The Zonda F Primary Edition has a 1.54. Same with the F, uh, F8 Spider. And the Konasek 1.1 has a 1.52. This is a 1.48. So it's it's noticeable that those high speed turns it really struggles with because it just doesn't have the lateral Gs to stick that corner. But it's, it's certainly controllable. It's very grippy. It's very glued to the ground. If you're having trouble controlling hypercars, I actually think this is a great option for you. Uh, to, to start trying and it's a beautiful car and it's new so give it a shot buy the car customize it and uh, yeah have fun with it man thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll catch you on the next one trigger out